Audio Sound. This is Bjorn Jacobson speaking, and this is a video series about how to do AAA sized projects in WISE. Hi, and welcome. This is the first video in the series. We'll be creating a AAA WISE project. And quick disclaimer about that is that, of course, WISE projects are always different from project to project. You cannot have one set of structure that will work with every project. It's just that every project is different, but you will probably realize that AAA projects are basically no different from your everyday indie project that is that only just one guy is working on. It's really important to understand that WISE is WISE and you need to use it as a tool and you will have to do so regardless of the size of your project, if you're using WISE, that is. What we will be creating here is trying to simply mock up or prototype a game. Let's say we've been hired to do a project and there is no game yet. There's nothing to show for. Or maybe they have a grayscale thing. You can move a box around, but you don't have a character. But we know what this is going to be. So let's say a first person game and we can walk around in indoor, outdoor environments and we will have a bunch of parameters. Let's take that into account for first. Um, what I would start by doing is to find a naming convention for all my files to begin with. While I find my naming convention, I will also be setting up the basic mixing structure of everything. This is a typical uh, wise window for me. I have my Project Explorer one on the left and two on the right. This means that I can basically click any object and then say control shift and whatever number it is and make it pop up in that window if I wanted to. That becomes really handy if you're using queries or the profile or the reference viewer, or if you're searching for any file and you can then click it and find out where in the hierarchy it is. It's really important. But what I would start by doing is that since we're working on a game where we know we will be able to move around, and then let's say that we know that we will have at least an audio bus for everything that our player does and player master but we then also know that there will probably be npcs so let's call it the npc master we will also have one for our ambient structure which is ambient master under ambience for example Let's, we know that we will have, but that's what we will be creating later. Also, a quick disclaimer about that this is not a project where, or a video series where we, we, be, we will be designing sounds. I won't be showing how to design the sounds. I will be talking strictly about its implementation and how we can do stuff in WISE. How you do your thing with your sounds, that's up to you. And there's plenty of other tutorials about that. But let's uh, keep it at how to do sounds like this in WISE, in a technical perspective. So we know from Ambient Master that we will probably have Ambient Beds. And under Ambient Beds, what will be there, we will have our 2D Ambient Beds. So under Ambient Master as well, we're going to have 3D Ambients. This will be any sound that can pop up in a 3D located place in the world. We can then also have, which is different from ambient beds, we can also have a 2D ambience. The reason why we also have a 2D ambient bed here is that we might have other things that could be like ambient bed sweeteners and so on. This could be probably under there as well. We have our player master. We know for sure that our player master will be able to have player locomotion, which means that under here we can probably have footsteps. So sticking to our naming convention, player footsteps, and so on. We will have player cloth, etc., etc. having all these here. We also know that we will be having an auxiliary bus structure, so we will have reverbs. I know that we will be using it, so let's just put it in there. Reverbs, a new child, auxiliary bus, large room. Small room, cave, and let's just say outdoor. We can have plenty of more of these, and we can use our user-defined or game-defined auxiliary buses to control which of these everything is being sent to, and it's really important. Now, the second thing is that every time we have a sound, we will need to know how that file should be named, and it's really important. Easy for if you're working on a project alone to have a crazy structure where we we'll have no structure at all. Footsteps are just one day named footsteps on one, two, three, four, and the other day it's called FS something. 
I would propose that you always have something that indicates what type of file is it. Is it a single or a looped file? And what is it? Who does it belong to? And so on. So let's, for example, under our hierarchy here, say we have a sound effect. And let's just say that this was a footstep sound. So it would probably be called SFX player. We can shorten that by typing plur. SFX player. And this is locomotion. And this is for walking. And it's, let's say, dirt. And it's variation 01. Something like that. This means that you can always, up here in your, in your search bar, always type, we know that we want locomotion and we want walking. We are looking for something. You will get a very nice list of something that you can look for. This also means that if you conform to this type of naming convention, other people working in the project will also do so. And then it makes it a lot easier to find their stuff, your stuff, and even your own stuff later if you're alone. It makes it a lot easier to know exactly what you've been working on. And this should actually conform to even your DAW projects and so on. Let's get rid of this dummy file. So now we already have a basic mixer. We already know that we will have these things here. So think about that when you're setting up a project. Already, try and figure out what will your bus structure be? How will your sounds be set up? Well, how do you want them rooted in between each other? And just think about that these buses are not expensive to have. They don't cost you anything. So not the more the merrier, but the more you can set it up in a structured way from the very beginning, the easier your life will be later. When it comes to naming conventions, I have seen projects where file names becomes extremely long because they also contain the folder structure in there. So it's player, footsteps, etc., 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 for very specific characters and so on, simply because they want to know, even if they find the files in their project, it doesn't have to be wise, but if they find the file in their project, they will know exactly in which folder to look for it. So that they, you don't have to. Another thing is also that, it, not that it hurts you that much, but the default work unit, except here in the master mixer hierarchy, is always, I'll probably say always, never used. It's not that you can't have stuff in there when you're testing stuff and so on, but it will need to be spaced out over a cross of your project. So over here under events, you would never have events in your default work unit. You would probably have a work unit called player or plur or whatever. But let's say player, we have another one for NPC and so on. So this here could be player, general sounds to the player, but then we also have one for locomotion. We also have stuff. And the reason why we have as many of these as possible is that every time you have a work unit, the work unit makes it possible to split the project into that people can work on it without breaking each other's content. And it's really important. And don't be afraid to use these work units at all. The same goes for over here under your actor mixer hierarchy. Nothing goes into the default work unit. We will simply be creating work units for player locomotion, player this, player that. It doesn't have to be with an underscore. It can also be a camel typograph, which would be player loco motion, etc. You can have as many of these as you want. But if you keep it simple, you can have all of these structured under one another. So let's say under player locomotion, you can have a work unit for footsteps. You can have one for cloth, etc. This would probably also, to stick to our naming convention, be called player cloth and so on. Because if you have one that is just called footsteps, what about under NPCs? Like if you have a work unit that is also called footsteps, because you cannot, it cannot be called footsteps because this one already takes up that space and you cannot have work units with the same name under the same structure of the hierarchy. So this would probably be called player footsteps instead, which means that this one here can now be called NPC footsteps which means that there's absolutely no doubt what is in this work unit. And also in your search window, if you do search for the name NPC or footsteps, these will pop up and it makes it a lot easier to find out what goes where. And these are very, very basic and very, very informant and important parts of how to do a basic Y setup. And it's really important to keep your project clean and structured. Thank you for watching this Kujo Sound video on how to do AAA size projects in Ys. 
If you like this video, why not hit the thumbs up or maybe even subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel and all the time that I take off to create all this content, consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash kujosam, where you for as little as one dollar a month can help me sustain this channel. I would really, really appreciate it. Hopefully, I'll see you again in another video or check out some of the other videos on the channel. It's a lot of game audio stuff. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next time.